This is a place of immense suffering, misery and death. It's a place where lives were destroyed and changed forever. This is Changi, Singapore. When Singapore fell to the Japanese in World War II, 50,000 British, Australian and Allied troops were imprisoned here. They were crammed together in terrible conditions. They were often tortured and beaten. Life was a daily struggle against humiliation, hunger and disease. Yet it was here in one of history's darkest hours, where conditions were at their worst, that we find a story that is heroic, moving, and most of all, inspirational. In this dreadful place, one man, a British bombardier, brought hope and peace to the broken and dying men of Changi. And he did it in the most unusual way. Stay tuned, because his story will inspire you and his secret could bring you hope and peace in your darkest hour as well. Singapore Changi Airport is one of the largest transportation hubs in Southeast Asia. It's the sixth busiest airport in the world and the second busiest in Asia. Each week, about 7,000 flights land or depart from Changi, or about one every 90 seconds, with about 60 million passengers passing through the airport each year. But Changi is more than just an airport. It's a destination in its own right, with a multitude of shopping, dining, and entertaining experiences on offer at the airport's four terminals. It's not surprising that it's currently rated the world's best airport, a rating it's held for the past five years. This airport has blossomed and boomed over the past few decades. So it's not surprising that the first airfield at Changi lacked the sophistication and marvelous attractions of today's airport. But what is surprising is that the very first airfield here at Changi was initiated by the occupying Imperial Japanese forces after the fall of Singapore in 1942. And the first landing strips were built by British and Australian POWs who were used as forced laborers. When Singapore fell to the Japanese on the 15th of February, 1942, it was Britain's greatest military defeat and the largest surrender of troops in British history. Around 80,000 British, Indian and Australian troops based in Singapore became prisoners of war. The Japanese were astounded at the sheer number of prisoners they suddenly found themselves with. Clearly, they had to do something with them and quickly they rapidly made a decision to segregate them along racial lines and march them to Changi in the south of the island. Over 50,000 prisoners made that journey. They were crammed together in terrible living conditions in a number of barracks in the area. They were often tortured and beaten. Life was a daily struggle against humiliation, hunger and disease. Changi was a living hell. Yet it was here in one of history's darkest hours, where conditions were at their worst, that we find a story that is heroic, moving, and most of all, inspirational. In this dreadful place, one man, a British bombardier, brought hope and peace to the broken and dying men of Changi. And he did it in the most unusual way. Stanley Warren, was born in England in 1917. He was a talented artist and a religious man. Stanley was employed as a commercial designer, producing poster ads with the Granada organization before the war. In 1940, he enlisted in the army to join the fight against Nazi Germany. He was posted to the Royal Regiment of Artillery as an observation post assistant. His responsibilities included having to make quick drawings of panoramas 
that were used to plot targets for the artillery guns. In early 1942, he was posted overseas to Malaya with the 15th Field Regiment Royal Artillery after the Japanese had invaded Malaya and Thailand and Pearl Harbor had been bombed. On their arrival, their fight against the Japanese was brutal and short-lived. Soon his battalion began retreating to Singapore. By the 12th of February, the situation in Singapore was desperate and Lieutenant General Arthur Percival, who was in charge of the British Malaya Command, ordered the troops into Singapore town. Three days later, the British surrendered and Stanley was interned as a prisoner of war at Roberts Barracks in Changi. Stanley joined other POWs who were forced to work around Singapore repairing the damage caused by the Japanese attacks and restoring essential services to working order again. They endured appalling conditions of overwork, starvation, sickness and torture. Disease was widespread and medical supplies were scarce. As a result of the extreme hard labour and horrific conditions, the men's morale and health deteriorated rapidly. Stanley suffered terribly. He developed a severe kidney disorder that was complicated by dysentery and malnutrition. He was close to death and was finally admitted to the Roberts Barracks Hospital in a comatose state. Later, he was transferred to the dysentery wing at Block 151. The building housed a chapel that the prisoners had built and dedicated to St. Luke, the Bible physician. While recuperating, Stanley heard the sound of Australian prisoners singing hymns and carols in the chapel. And the sound of those voices inspired him to use his artistic talents to create a symbol that would bring hope and peace to his fellow prisoners. As soon as he was strong enough, Stanley joined the choir and agreed to paint a series of murals on the chapel walls. He wondered what he could paint that would lift the prisoners' spirits and give them hope in their darkest hour. Then he realised that there was only one source of lasting hope and peace. He requested a Bible and focused on the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, from which he drew his inspiration. He decided to paint a series of murals that would share the very heart of Christian belief. At the time when Stanley was preparing his draft drawings of the murals, the Japanese began an action which would become infamous as the Selarang Barracks Incident. The Japanese demanded the prisoners' leaders sign a no-escape pledge. This was shortly after the recapture of four escaped soldiers. This type of declaration is against the Geneva Convention and the prisoners' leaders rightly refused to sign. The Japanese response was to have the four recaptured soldiers executed on Changi Beach. Then 17,000 prisoners were ordered from their barracks and forced to assemble in Selarang Barracks Square. They had to stand there in the open for nearly five days, exposed to the elements without water or sanitation until the no escape pledge was signed. Against this backdrop, Stanley began to paint the Changi murals. One of the biggest challenges he faced was finding paint and brushes. But the prisoners rallied and at risk of their lives, they managed to scrounge paint, make brushes from human hair and gather materials for the project. Despite still being very ill, Stanley began to work on the first mural. His illness and meagre diet meant that he could only paint for a limited period each day for perhaps 10 to 15 minutes at a time, followed by a rest. He fainted often, which also slowed his progress. Stanley decided to use the same technique he used when he worked as a cinema billboard artist before the war. 
he drew in clear, bold outlines so that the murals could be seen at a glance or from a distance. To compensate as much as he could for the lack of available colour, he resorted to large brush strokes and areas of solid colour. The result was to be murals of very low tones. The first mural Stanley painted featured the Nativity or Birth of Christ. He painted each of the three wise men who presented gifts to the baby Jesus as being from different racial groups. The figure holding the cup is Asian. The robed and turbaned wise man kneeling at the front is Middle Eastern. And the third wise man is European. This helped convey the concept of universality, that we're all equal and part of the one human family that shares this planet. Above the mural, he painted the words that the angels used to announce the birth of Jesus. Peace on earth to men of goodwill. Despite serious illness, Stanley persevered and managed to complete the mural in time for Christmas. This lifted the spirits of the prisoners. That Christmas, the chapel was absolutely packed and others stood outside and listened to the service and hymns. There was peace in Changi Prison that great Christmas of 1942 and in the hearts of many of the POWs as well. And the fact that his nativity mural contributed to that made Stanley glad. Stanley feared that he would die before he completed the mural project. So he decided to paint the ascension of Jesus, his return to heaven, next after the nativity, so that the chapel would at least have two murals representing the beginning and the end of Christ's time on earth. Fortunately, his health improved and he was able to complete the second mural on another wall within several weeks. The Ascension mural features the risen Christ saying to his disciples, go and teach the nations, I am with you. The third mural to be painted was the crucifixion and Stanley deliberately chose slaves to carry out the crucifixion. The slaves clad only in loincloths were a direct reference to the prisoners' own conditions. Loincloths is what many of them wore. But there's an additional, subtle, more important message here. By using slaves, Stanley was also inferring that the Japanese soldiers were under orders when they carried out the many atrocities that they committed. Stanley was a committed Christian and in this mural, he was forgiving his captors for the mistreatment of the POWs. Above the mural, he painted the words, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. To emphasize the concept of forgiveness, Stanley painted Jesus with his eyes closed so that he wouldn't see and recognize those who were harming him. He wouldn't hold it against them. That's true forgiveness. The message of this crucifixion mural was so powerful that even the Japanese guards would come into the chapel and gaze up at it. And whenever the chaplains met with small groups of prisoners, they chose to stand under this mural. Next came the painting of the Last Supper. The mural depicts Christ sharing the very first communion with his disciples before his betrayal by Judas Iscariot and his subsequent torture and crucifixion. The inscription reads, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Christ was telling of the suffering and death that he was soon to endure. The prisoners found hope and affinity in this suffering Messiah. They felt he understood their situation and that brought them comfort. The final mural shows an aged St. Luke in prison writing his gospel while a Roman centurion and others watch on. The walls of the prison are broken down to show that the human spirit and true hope cannot be contained. Christ's word would go out to the world 
despite imprisonment. The Changi murals were completed by May 1943. Their effect on the atmosphere in the prison camp was quite remarkable. In that living hell, in one of history's darkest hours, where conditions were at their worst, Stanley Warren's paintings boosted the morale of the men, brought them spiritual uplift, provided them peace and gave them hope. The murals and their message played a role in the survival of many Changi POWs. After he started painting the murals, Stanley was informed that his work party was to be sent north to work on the Thai Burma Railway. A colonel in charge of the hospital, who was aware of his work on the murals, intervened to have Stanley transferred back to the hospital so that he could continue his work in the chapel. Most of Stanley's unit who went to the Thai Burma Railway never returned. If Stanley went in his weakened condition, he most certainly would have died there. So the murals very directly saved his life in a way he could never have foreseen. After the war, Stanley returned to England where he married and became an art teacher at a school in London. Meanwhile, St Luke's Chapel at Changi was turned into a storeroom. The murals were painted over and forgotten. And the Changi murals remained forgotten for 13 years until an unnamed RAF national serviceman was told to clean up the storeroom which had served as the POW's chapel. He noticed that some streaks of colour lay under the outer coat of paint and reported it to his officer, who realised the importance of the discovery. The outer coat of paint was carefully removed, revealing the five murals. But there was no signature on any of the murals, and so the identity of the artist was a mystery. An all-out search was then put into operation, involving the national press in Britain. In February 1959, Stanley Warren was finally found living in London with his wife and son, still teaching his beloved art. The RAF contacted Stanley and persuaded him to make three trips back to Singapore to restore his murals. And today, 60 years later, Stanley Warren's Changi murals continue to inspire people with their enduring message of hope just as they did for hundreds of his fellow prisoners of war back in the darkest days of World War II. What is it about hope that's so important to us as humans and our well-being? It's said that we can go three weeks without food, three days without water, three minutes without oxygen, but how long can we exist without hope? The loss of hope is a terrible thing. Without hope, life's challenges bring discouragement, despair, depression, and even death. Without hope, we are broken people. That's why the Bible lists hope as one of the three great Christian virtues. It links hope to faith and love, and it indicates that these three virtues are amongst the most important gifts that God gives us and that they will remain or last. Notice what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 13. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. So there you have them, faith, hope, and love. These are three gifts that God gives us, and they are linked, they're united. What happens to one? happens to all. And what happens is that they remain, they never end. Many people understand hope as wishful thinking, a desire for something they may or may not receive. As in, I hope something will happen. Like, I hope I get a new job, or I hope it'll be a sunny day tomorrow. But not knowing if they'll happen or not. But this is not what the Bible means by hope. The Bible definition of hope is confident expectation. It refers to a desire for something we are certain to receive. 
and assurance concerning the future. The Christian hope is based upon what God has already done in the completed work of Jesus. It's built on fact. This is true hope. It's far greater than just a wish or a desire. This is hope that lasts forever. And this is what Stanley Warren communicated in his murals. He simply told the story of Jesus. He pictured the most important events in his life, the very heart of Christian belief. He brought hope into the lives of the POWs at Changi Death Camp by communicating faith, hope and love. In his first mural, featuring the nativity or birth of Christ, Stanley showed that God is not far away like some uncaring, absent landlord. Rather, in Jesus Christ, He came to this planet of ours and became intimately and actively involved in providing a solution to the problems we face. And right there, when Jesus was born, we are reminded of what's really behind our major problems. Notice what God said regarding Mary and the birth of Jesus in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Jesus came to this planet for one purpose, to save us from our sins. The Bible says that because of the wrong things we do, everyone falls short of who God wants us to be. Because of the wrong things we do, sin separates us from God. But Jesus came to earth over 2,000 years ago to pay the price for our sins. That's why He came. And that's the message of hope that Stanley shared in his Nativity mural. Then in the mural of the Last Supper, Stanley shared how on the Thursday before His execution, Jesus sat down at the table with His disciples to eat His final meal before His crucifixion and resurrection. The Last Supper was very significant because Jesus showed His disciples He was about to become the Passover Lamb of God. His shed blood would open the door to freedom. His followers would exchange slavery to sin and death for eternal life in God's kingdom. This mural carried a powerful message of hope to the prisoners here as they were literally slaves. This mural gave those slaves hope. The crucifixion mural continued the message of hope for those prisoners in Changi. When Jesus died in our place on the cross, He paid the penalty for our sins. He broke the power of sin and death and created a new relationship with God for us. And that brings true freedom. No matter what our circumstances, no matter what mistakes we've made, we can have the assurance that our sins are forgiven if we bring them to the cross and leave them there. Next came the resurrection mural. Here Stanley shared with his fellow prisoners that by rising from the dead, Christ's promise of new life became sure and certain. Even though they were facing death, Stanley's resurrection mural gave these prisoners hope, a living hope of eternal life through Jesus Christ. And so through all their challenges and persecution, Stanley Warren and his fellow prisoners fixed their eyes upon the Lord Jesus Christ, their hope. Amid all the hopelessness and despair of this dark place, they found hope, true hope, through these murals that pointed them to Jesus. As I stand here in the Changi Chapel, gazing at Stanley's hope-filled murals, It's as if I can hear the voices of those prisoners echoing down the years, singing the old favourite hymn of faith and assurance. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. What about you? Have you lost hope? Where do you find your hope? in the trials and storms of life. When you accept Jesus and allow Him into your life, 
then He will bring life-giving forgiveness into your situation and bring you hope, real hope. With Jesus in your life, you'll never face your problems alone. You'll know victory instead of failure. You'll have true hope to face your challenges. You can stand with Jesus and He will guide you through life in ways that are far better than you can ever think or imagine. Jesus will put your life together again, give you hope and walk with you step by step. If you'd like to have that hope in your life, why not ask for it right now as we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we all face challenges in the journey of life. And sometimes it seems that the trials and storms of life are about to overwhelm us. And when we're down, it's so easy to fall into discouragement, despair and depression. Please point us to Jesus, uplift us and give us the hope that comes from knowing Him. Lord, we want to stand with You and have You guide us through life. Please bless us and give us hope. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you feel as if you've lost hope or would like to find out more about Christian hope, then I'd like to recommend the free gift we have for all our viewers today. It's the Christian classic, Steps to Christ. This book is our gift to you and is absolutely free. There are no costs or obligations whatsoever. Thousands have become acquainted with Jesus and found hope through this book and it has helped many more, including those who have walked with Him for years, to know Him better. So please, don't miss this wonderful opportunity to receive the gift we have for you today. Here's the information you need. Phone us now on 048 1315 or text us on 0491 222299 or visit our website theincrediblejourney.tv to request today's free offer. So don't delay. Contact us right now. Be sure to join us again next week when we'll share another of life's journeys together and experience another new and thought-provoking perspective on the peace, insight, understanding and hope that only the Bible can give us. Until next week, remember the ultimate destination of life's journey. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. <laughs>